Hey guys, Paul Tower here, back with another video. So today we're going to be doing my general election prediction based off of August 15th, 2024. So this is my last video, a lot has changed. Everyone knows Biden dropped out. I kind of thought he was staying in the race, but anyway, yeah. The race has gotten a lot tighter than I expected as well. So we're kind of seeing a honeymoon period for Kamala Harris. Um, she's doing rallies. And I'm starting to think that the Trump campaign is not really making the best plays right now. So, for example, they attacked Joe Rogan. I don't really see what they gained from that. A couple other things they did was Trump is not doing that many rallies compared to Kamala Harris. So if you look, for example, I see her and Tim Walls out there every day. I see J.D. Vance out there every day. J.D. Vance is doing interviews. Kamala Harris isn't. Trump's not really doing too much. I think he went to Asheville yesterday, North Carolina. He did an Ada Ross interview. Uh, extremely softball and then what else but he, that's it he's not really doing too much and then he held a press conference but yeah like he's not really doing too much the trump campaign has said that they're keeping a light schedule for the august month and that they're going to be um dumping all their money after labor day happens after labor day weekend which i can i guess kind of understand because kamala harris is in her honeymoon period right now but i don't think this is the best strategy because now trump's getting constant attacks he's not really firing back at it and if you look at 2016 the reason he was able to milk the media attention was because he was doing like two rallies a day in this like in august 2016 he was dominating the airways you know and that created a lot of attention on him but i don't really see the strategy of just chilling on mar lago working out too well but anyway let's do the election map so let's start off in new hampshire new hampshire kamala harris is leading about five to six points and then their main concerns are about economic and health care i think trump's gonna uh get a lot of turnout in the rural areas as expected and the harris is gonna win more in the suburban areas but if you look so going back to like 2016 at this point clinton led trump by about seven to nine points and then she led trump with an average of about three points in the final week and then she carried the state by 0.4 and then Going back four years ago, Biden was up about 8 to 10 points, New Hampshire. And then final week, he led about 7. And then he ended up winning by 7. So pretty consistent with the polls there. So based off this, I do think that Harris is going to hold a decent lead in New Hampshire, giving her the state. And I think most people can agree on this one. Oh, yeah, so I think it'll probably be like around 5 to 6 points. So I'll, I guess I'll put New Hampshire in likely for now. Now going to the state of let's go to let's go to Virginia here. So Virginia, this is the state where in my last video, after that disastrous debate for President Biden, I was thinking Virginia might tilt to Trump. Honestly, with this with Harris being on the ticket now and the amount of enthusiasm she has, I don't really see this happening anymore. Especially since this is a state where the economy, healthcare, and then abortion rights are like extremely significant for Virginia. So Trump is probably going to win on the economic side, but abortion is also pretty important here. And Virginia, like Trump's position on abortion is just extremely unpopular right now. So, sorry, I did not mean to bark that red. So I'm guessing Virginia is going to go to President Harris, or sorry, not President, Vice President Harris by around like four to five points. In 2016, Clinton led about like seven to nine points in Virginia at this time. Final week, five points, and then she won it by five points. So it was pretty accurate. 2020, Biden led Trump about 10 to 12 points at this time, and then about 11 points in the final week, and then he won by 10. So it was still kind of consistent. Don't really think she's gonna. Don't sorry. Don't really think Trump's gonna carry the state at all. Now going down to North Carolina, I say this has like a different result. So this is a state where Trump's been leading about one to six. Sorry, 1.6 to 3.1 points in the aggregates. It's pulling around 48 to Harris is 46. There are some outlier polls about with Harris like up a point. But this is the state where economic issues like particularly inflation, job security, they're top concerns for the North Carolina voters. Trump's message on economy and then the growth handling inflation is really going to hit home here. I mean, Harris's focus on social justice, I guess, is probably just going to do good in Raleigh and Charlotte. Outside of that, I don't really see she's not going to perform too well. Once you get out towards like the rural parts of the uh, state. And then in 2016, 
Trump led Clinton about three to four points at this point, 1.3 point lead in the final week, and then he carried the state by 3.6. And then in August, around this time, Trump led Biden barely in North Carolina. And then final week, he had a 0.7 lead, and then he carried the state by 1.3. So going with that, Trump is probably going to carry the state of North Carolina. I say about about a two point margin, but yeah, I I do think he's going to outperform the polls in general because, uh, like I said, this is the honeymoon period, and I'm also kind of concerned for the Harris campaign in general because if this is your honeymoon period, right? Like you're only up by three to four points when Biden was up, and a lot of these states he was up by seven points going back to August 2020. Like this is not looking good, too good in my opinion. Um, but yeah, so let's go over to Georgia, Georgia. This is a state where it's going to be close, extremely close. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes either way here. I think both campaigns are not really doing themselves a good look here. Like bringing Megan Thee Stallion on stage was, I guess it filled up the crowd, but it probably wasn't a good look. And then if you look at Trump, I, I watched the rally. He's just attacking Brian Kemp which is, I guess, a popular governor of Georgia. And then he's pushing the whole uh, stop the steal stuff. This is what I mean. Trump, when he's good, he's really good. And then when he's bad, he just says stupid stuff. Like, stop the steal is an extremely unpopular position. And, like, I honestly don't think that he should be talking about it much. Because, sure, he needs I th- he has the MAGA base on lock. He needs to focus on getting independence here. Independents don't want to hear this. And then attacking Brian Kemp. It just doesn't look good. It's like really not a good look in my opinion. Speaking of this, but at the same time, top issues for Georgia, I guess, are the border crisis, inflation, job security, stuff like that, which Trump does have an edge on. Harris, it really depends. Let's, we have to see how much he's going to get out in Atlanta. But in 2016, at this time, Trump led Clinton about three to four points. Final week, he led by five points. He won by five points. 2020, they're basically tied at this point. And then Biden had like a 0.3 lead in Georgia. Final week, and then Biden won Georgia by 0.2. So this was pretty close. The polling in 2020 is actually pretty spot on in Georgia. Uh, based on this, Trump has historically performed well in Georgia, I guess, in 2016. Not, in, not so much in 2020. I'd say the state, at this point, based off the polls, I'd say he's barely going to carry Georgia. I think it'll go in the tilt column, like just barely. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if Trump were to, you know, just, just win by a point here or if Harris were to like win by like 0.2 or something. I would, like the state's going to be extremely close. Florida, this is a state where I think it's going to be likely. I forgot to put that in. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So right now Trump's at 251. Harris is at 201. Going over to Colorado. This is a state where I'd probably put this in the safe column for Vice President Harris. Like, I don't really think Trump's message is hitting too home here. Especially with Harris's focus on, I guess, climate change, clean energy, healthcare. I'm going to resonate much more stronger in Colorado. Um, Let's see. Yeah, Clinton led Trump by 8 to 10 points in Colorado. 2016, she won by 4.9 points. Um, 2020, sorry, 2016. And then 2020, Biden led by 10 to 12. Final week, he led by 13, and then he won by 13 and a half. So, this is a state where Trump's not really going to perform too well. <clears throat> going over to New Mexico, this is a state where I don't really see Trump doing too well as well. Here, 2016, Clinton led by 5 to 6 points about from this time period. Final week, it was 6 points. She won by 8 points. Uh, Biden led by 9 to 10 points at this time. He won... By 10.8%. So this is a state where I don't think Trump's going to win. New Mexico is probably going to go to Vice President Harris. Now let's go over to the state of Arizona. This is going to be an extremely tight race. I think the state's going to be decided within less than a point. But here's the thing. With Arizona, a lot of people are concerned about the economy and the border security. Which I guess are two issues that Trump is particularly good on. And at the same time... What I'm watching, so for example, Harris is completely flipped on the border stuff. Calling Harris the border czar and associating her with the mess at the border is a very strategically good move for President Trump. They're forcing Harris to pretty much split off from that message, I guess. 
And now she's trying to be like, oh, I'm tougher than Donald Trump at the border. That's the thing. I don't think this is a good look. To her base, at least. Towards the progressives that she needs to win in the state of Arizona. I'm saying this because in if you look at Europe, there have been studies done where left-wing parties have adapt like right-wing policies, especially on immigration, like Emmanuel Macron. Once you ally or once you go towards the right, you think you're going to win over independents or people who are voting immigration as their top issue. But it doesn't work because those people whose top issue is the border crisis, they're going to be going to Trump no matter what. So you're not really going to be making inroads with them. The only thing you have is losing your base, which is probably not a good look, especially in a state like Arizona, where it's going to come down to the wire. <coughs> but at the same time, oh my God, I don't know what happened with my mic. I saw her Arizona rally. It was pretty big. And if you look, in 2016, mid-August, Trump was leading Clinton by about one to three points. Final week, about one point. And then he won by three and a half. So he outperformed the margin there. Mid-August, Biden led about two to three points. Final week, it was about one and a half point Arizona. And then he won by 0.3. So Trump does overperform the polls here. This is a state that's a true toss. But honestly, if I had to say, I'd probably give it to Vice President Harris just because of the abortion thing here. It's not really a too good look. So right now, it's at 227 to 251. Now, let's go to a state like Nevada. So with the state of Nevada... This is a state where Trump's still leading in the polls by about, like, what, three and a half point aggregate? Economy and jobs is a pretty big issue here. Healthcare, same with some of the social issues where Harris is going to have a lead. I think Harris is going to perform well, obviously, in, like, Las Vegas, Reno, where the Democratic base is strong, and then Trump's going to absolutely dominate in the rural areas. But if you look at the suburbs, like Clark County, like the Las Vegas area, it's a key battleground. Harris needs to perform really well here to counter Trump's strength in the rural Nevada. But... I don't really know if that's going to happen, especially in Nevada. So Clinton led about Trump by five to, f yeah, four to five points in Nevada in August, mid-August at this time. Final week, it was 2.4, and then she won by 2.4. So this was pretty spot on. Biden led Trump about six to eight points in Nevada at this time. He, The average was 2.4 in the final week, and then he won by 2.4. So th both times, it's been spot on, the final week at least. So since Trump does tend to do better in the polls going towards this, the election, he's already winning, and he wasn't the past two times, I will give Nevada to Trump. I think it'll be lean. I don't think it'll be... I don't really see Harris performing too well, honestly, here. But yeah. Going over to Minnesota, this is a state where I think it's probably going to be likely for Harris. Tim Walls is from there. He is... I think Tim Walls is going to really help carry the state for... Harris, she was going to carry it regardless, even if it was Shapiro as the nominee for VP, but yeah. I don't really think we have to go too much over Minnesota here. But now going over to the three most interesting states in the election, I guess. So if you look at Wisconsin, she's leading about 1.2 average. It's about 48.9 to 47.7. Harris has a stronger lead when third-party candidates are included, so with RFK Jr., for example. And the voters in Wisconsin are particularly focused on economic issues, like particularly job security inflation. This is where Trump's going to do well. Blue-collar voters in the rural areas. Um, let's see, healthcare. This is the part where Harris is probably going to edge him out. Mid-August 2016, Trump was leading about ten, sorry, Clinton was leading about ten points. Final week six and a half, and then she barely lost by zero point seven. So Trump definitely outperformed seven points in the final week. And then if you look at the 2021, mid-August, she was Trump, Biden was, sorry, Biden was up 6 to 8 points, final week 6.7, and then Biden won Wisconsin by 0 0.6. So there's a silent majority that usually does go to for Trump. But based on this, I think Harris is narrowly, like she is still winning Wisconsin, in the polls at least. Given the tight polling and the historical trend of Trump overperforming, I think it's going to be really close. Wisconsin is likely to be like very closely. But I do think, as of right now, I'll give the state to Harris, just barely. It's going to be pretty close, like, like tilt to Harris. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to Trump. But yeah, right now, 247 to 257. So now we have Michigan and 
Pennsylvania left. So going over to Michigan, Harris is doing much better in Michigan than she is in the other states. So there was this one outlier poll. I think everyone's seen this where she was up by 11 points. I don't think she's going to carry 11 points. Everyone knows. She, uh, she, even she knows she's not going to get that by 11 points. Now, this is the thing where I think is going to be really important. This is a state with a high Arab population. And if you look at Harris, the way she's standing on the conflict, she's been extremely vague. So there is a portion of hope for her in terms of that voting block that Biden just completely lost. But at the same time, I don't think a lot of people are stupid. They do see that the administration is called Biden-Harris, so she is pretty much associated with what's going on. But at the same time, like she's not gonna, she's not really, she's being pretty quiet about Israel and Gaza, the Hamas conflict, which does spark hope to that group of voters, which I do think will likely give her the state, just barely. Clinton led about eight to ten points at this time. Clinton led Trump three to four points, but three to four points in the final week, and then Trump barely won. It's a pretty big swing, three point seven swing. And then there is a swing as well. So this is a 1.2% swing in the final week between Biden and Trump. So Biden led by four points in the final week. And then he won by 2.8. So the swing has gotten smaller. The polling has gotten more accurate in Michigan. With her being up by about three to four, don't really see that how Trump's going to swing it. It'll be less than one point for sure. So it'll be 262 to 257. Now going over to the state of Pennsylvania. This is going to be extremely close. Yeah, let me pull it up. Yeah. So Pennsylvania, this is the this is the state where Kamala is leading about one to three points in the most recent polls. This is a state where I say Trump is more perceived as a stronger candidate on the terms of economic management, job creation, immigration. Trump is also leading here. Healthcare, it's going to Harris. <coughs> Sorry about that. But then if you look. If you look at the polling, so in 2016, mid-August, Clinton led Trump by about 79 points. And then final week, it was 2%, and then Trump won by 0.7. Biden led Trump by about 6 days at this time, and then he led by 1.2 in the final week. And then he won by 1.2. So it was pretty spot on. Trump has consistently outperformed the polls in Pennsylvania. Given the historic trends of Trump's just pretty much overperforming in 2016, and the tie accuracy in 2020, and the current polling... I'd say Trump has a pretty strong chance of winning Pennsylvania. I do think the undecided voters are probably going to swing in favor of him. In this state, at least. Uh, but the state's still going to be pretty competitive. So I could definitely see Harris winning the state, as of right now, at least. This is a pre-debate. I do think that it will barely swing to Trump. So this is my map right now. 262 to 277. I do think, sorry, 276. I do think a lot will and probably will change. Like we said, three months, we have, like, what, 80, 88 days, something like that, to go to the election. That's actually, like, an eternity in politics, especially based on what happened in July and June. Like, the Biden debate, Biden drops out, Trump got shot, RNC, all happened within a month. It feels like a while ago, but it just recently happened. But this is my map, 262 to 276. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. And, yeah. Thank you so much.